three, four. Hi, my name is Brett Robley. Welcome to C-Sharp Programming on .NET, how to read a CSV file. I teach at Cal State University Fullerton. The class is ISDS 309. And last lesson, we learned how to create a file and write a CSV file. And so now let's go to Visual Studio and create a new project to read a CSV file. Select a console app and let's call it read CSV. And we'll go ahead and get this project created. Now let's remove lines of code that we don't need, so we'll leave the first line and let's put in our using static system.console and then as we learned last lesson we need to use system.io and let's create the class called read sequential file and then let's set up our static void main method where all code starts and ends in C-sharp. And let's set up a constant care delimiter uh, equal to a comma so that we can read our comma separated value. And let's create a file name, actually the same file name that we created last lesson. We need to open that file now. It already exists. It already has data in it. It's empdata.txt. And like last time, we're going to use the file stream class to create a file stream object. Only this time it's called infile. And we'll call the constructor, pass it the file name. And the file mode this time will be open instead of create. And the file access will be read instead of write. And now let's go ahead and wrap our file stream object in a stream reader object called reader and we instantiate it and we pass in file which is an object reference now I want to create a variable a string variable that can hold a line of text as we read a line of text from the file we'll store it in rec which is short for record And then we're going to create a string array called fields. And that's where we will store the various fields of information that are in a single record. We'll use the string.split method uh, that, uh, to parse the string and remove the commas. And so we'll say um, OK, let's write a header to the screen first. The curly braces are the uh, format string. The first number in the curly brace is the positional variable and the second is the width of the column. The minus sign indicates it's left justified in the column and no minus sign indicates it's right justified in the column. So you see the four pairs of curly braces. The first number is 0, 1, 2, and 3, respectively. And so we have to follow with four values. In this case, they're all literal strings. Emp, space, number, three spaces, uh, first header and last header. OK, now let's read a line of text from the file and store it in rec. Let's create our while loop. And we'll test rec to see if it's null or not. Now, in the line above the while, when we read a line of text from the file, if the file was empty, rec would be set to null. And that's how we'd know we were done. As long as there are more lines in the file, rec will not be null. So we'll enter the loop, and we will then parse or split out the fields based on the commas. So that's the statement you see there on line 24, fields equals rec dot split and we pass split the delimiter so it knows what to split on. We're splitting on the comma character.
and now um, I'm going to write out the values under the headers and so rather than retyping that line I'm just going to copy that line and pull it down and modify it Okay, and then I'm going to replace the literal strings with field 0, field 1, field 2, and field 3. Now, this is going to fail, but the reason I'm doing this, and, and this is not Joyce's, Joyce um, Farrell's code, I'm actually breaking her code now because I want you to see what happens when the program fails, as you will undoubtedly encounter this kind of an error and then we'll go back and fix it okay so now uh, now that we've written out um, the record the record on the screen to display it let's go ahead and get the next line from the file and then we'll go back to the top of the while loop and test to see if rec is null so we'll continue to read records from the file and write them out to the screen under the headings until we're out of lines and when we're out of lines rec will be set to null we'll fall out of the loop or print a blank, a blank line on the console and then we need to send a message to reader to close and write an in file to close and then we need to run this to see if it's going to work and sure enough we got our headings up there at the top number first and last but notice now we have an error a fatal error for the program and it is uh, vital that you slow down and you look at each part of the message don't let it scare you just look at each part and understand where it's coming from it's in the main method from program.cs it's on line 25 and it's an index out of range error well indexes are used with arrays and so notice here that we have one that's our first field our second field our third field and our fourth field and they line up with each of the four values that follow they're all literal strings okay down here in the while loop I followed followed it with four fields 0 1 2 and 3 well we need to look at our text file our comma separated file to see what's going wrong here so I'm gonna copy this first line and then I'm gonna tab it over and get rid of the commas and then above each column I'm gonna write the index so the imp number is gonna be fields 0 the first name is gonna be fields 1 and the last name is gonna be fields 2 so there is no fields 3 and by trying to access field uh, subscript 3 I basically violated the boundary of the array that I had built and that's what threw the error and that's why we crashed so I need to go back and and I need to line things up so employee number is the first thing in the file so we can see it right there so that means we want field 0 that, to be the first value and then the next one we just want three spaces because we're just using that to line things up so I'll change this to three spaces and that matches up above and then I'm gonna print the first name so I need field sub 1 I'm cleaning up field sub 3 so field sub 1 is first name, field sub 2 is last name. We'll run it again, and this time it works just fine. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.